Okay, this video will be on how to create a web banner in Photoshop. So I'm going to go ahead and set up a document. So I am going to go File, New. I'm going to select Web. I'm going to set how many pixels I want for the width and the height. I'm going to get rid of artboards. And for this particular one, I think I will set it up at 750 pixels. I'll make the height 250. The resolution should be 72 pixels per inch and RGB. And I have to decide what I want the background to be. I could choose any of these options. I'll just leave it at white for this particular one and I will say create. Okay. So here is my document. I'm not able to move it over. I sort of like my images or my files kind of up in the upper corner here. To get rid of this back black background, you can always go under Window, Application Frame, and get rid of that. That's my preference. You don't need to do that. That's just my preference. It just gives me a little bit more of ability to move this floating window around. Now, with this banner, I want to bring in an image. I do have an image already on my desktop that I'm going to bring in. So I think the easiest way to do it in Photoshop without getting into too much detail would be to go File, Open, and I'm going to open up that image, which is on my desktop. And it's right here, picture of a dog, and I'm going to open it. Okay. To bring this image into my file, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the whole image with my selection tools and I'm going to select the rectangular marquee tool and I'm going to draw a selection around these pixels here and I'm going to go edit copy. I am going to go to my first tab here and then I'm going to go edit paste. Okay. Now the image is in here, but it's really big. So I need to scale that image down. So I'm going to make sure I'm on that image layer. And I can tell I am if I toggle the eyeball on and off. And I'm going to scale it down. There's no scale tool in Photoshop, but rather you transform. So I'm going to go edit, transform. I could either free transform or transform scale. Either is fine. If you do free transform, you can do basically all these operations at the same time, but I'll just do scale. Okay. I do get the outline of that box, but I can't see the whole thing. So um, I'm going to go view and I will fit, fit on screen. Okay. Now I can see the whole outline of that image and I'm going to scale it down. I'm going to go to the corner here and I'm going to start pulling. I'm going to hold down my shift key to make sure I'm doing it proportionally. And um, that's pretty good. I'm going to click in the middle and just move that image around where I want it to be. When I'm happy with how it's on my banner, I can just go ahead and hit the return key and it lays it in place. I'm going to zoom back in using my zoom tool. Okay, good. Now, I want to fill the background with a color similar to what's on this image. So on my background layer, I want to make sure that it's unlocked so I can go ahead and manipulate the background color. So I'm going to just double click to get rid of that lock and say, okay. Now that lock is gone. I am going to go to my color picker, click on the color picker from down here. And I want to get a color similar to this. Uh, if you move out of the color picker window, you can go into that image and you can kind of sample the different colors. I'm just clicking around and I'm going to pick maybe this kind of tan color, maybe a little bit lighter, and I'm going to say OK. Now I've got that color in the forefront of my color chip and <clears throat> I'm going to fill this layer. So I'm going to go Edit, Fill. I'm going to select the foreground from this drop down and just say OK. Now, what I want to do is I really would like a smooth transition from this block of color to the image. And so I'm, what I think I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use a selection here and actually feather it out. To do that, I'm going to go to my 
selection tools, I'm going to leave it at rectangle and I'm going to make sure that I'm on the image layer. You have to be on the layer that you want to modify and I do want to modify the image. And at the top here where it says feather, I have an option to add a feather and I'm going to maybe do 80. So I'm going to put 80 pixels in here. Now, keep in mind that when, once you enter a feather, it's kind of a sticky setting. So if you go back again with the, the uh, rectangular marquee tool, you might have a feather stuck in here, kind of a sticky setting that you might have to get rid of. But I'm fine with it right now, and I'm going to draw out a selection. Okay. Okay, it's telling me my selection's too big. Let me try that one more time. No pixels are more than 50% selected. Hmm. Let me go ahead and make this a smaller feather. Try that again. Okay, that worked. It did because of the, my image size and the size of this image, it said, nope, can't do it. I'm going to move the selection over by clicking inside of it. And I'm simply going to hit the delete key in my keyboard. Now it got rid of some of this but I want to get rid of some more and that's pretty good. Uh, I'm going to move my selection up here, hit my delete key and I'm going to get rid of, I see a little bit of a faint line here so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that as well. Okay and it's gone. I'm going to stop the selection by going select deselect. Now I got a fairly good transition from this tan to this image. You certainly could do more uh, if you wanted to but I'm, I'm actually fairly good with it. Now I want to set some text on my banner. Now Photoshop by default will give you a new layer in your layer palette if you add text, but you can always come in here and add a layer by yourself. I'm going to go ahead and go to the text tool and I'm going to click in the dialog box. Photoshop gives me some lorem ipsum to work with and I'll just stick with my theme of dog Oops, dog lovers. I'm going to hit the return key. Lovers. By the way, since the last time I used the character palette, I do have all caps kind of stuck in there. there. So if you don't want all caps, make sure that you toggle this setting off. Paragraphs in the way. But I'm actually okay with it being all caps. So I'm going to leave that be. Now, if I want to make this text bigger, I want to make sure that it's selected and I want to come up to the top here and I'm going to use either the drop down here to select a point size or this is a slider as well. You see the double arrows. I could slide through here and increase or decrease and I'm just going to leave it about 66 and I'm just going to move to my move tool just to kind of set in place. Now I feel like the space between these lines is too much. I want to actually bring lovers up a little bit more, the word lovers. So I'm going to go to my type tool again. I'm going to launch the character palette, which is right here. And this setting right here allows me to change the distance between the lines or the letting. I can go to the drop down and I could select 18. It's going to move them too close. I could select 48, which is still a little bit too close. I'm going to do the slider here just to kind of tweak it here. And I'm actually good with that. Now, if you don't like the text color, you can always change the color right here. Or you could go to your text tool and you could change it right here in the option palette. Either is, a, either is fine. Maybe I'll make it more of a dark brown like the uh, dog's hair here. So I'll click here. This is where I'm going to do it. I get the color picker again. I'm going to move it out of, way, out of the way and click right about here in the dog image. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I actually want to center my text, so I'm going up to the top here and select center. Centering it to the document, so I'm going to move it over here. Okay, back on the text tool. All the tools in Photoshop are sensitive to the tool that you've selected. Since I have the text tool selected now, I do get the options for text. You can change the font that you want to use. Okay, I'm going to leave it at Arial Black, but you can see the different fonts that you can choose from. You can choose a 
style. Aerial black is a style in itself, uh, meaning if you picked Helvetica, perhaps you have a style of bold you can select or thin or regular. Aerial black is just kind of by itself, no extra styles. I can see the pixels here as far, I'm sorry, the points for the type that I had set. set. Here, depending on the, on the font that you've chosen, you can make it crisp, stronger, or smooth. I'm actually good with how it is in here. I'm gonna go ahead and I will move my text up a little bit, and I'm gonna put another line of text in here. So I'm gonna to go to my layer palette again. I'm gonna close this extra palette, it's just kind of in my way here. Okay. I'm gonna add another layer. I'm gonna come down here in my document and I'm gonna to go to my T tool again. Click gives me some lorem ipsum based on the size that I had before. I'm gonna change the size right away to 48 because this is gonna be like a subhead. Okay, I actually want it a little bit smaller, so maybe I'll do 36, okay? I'm going to move it into the document so I can see it a little bit better, and I'm gonna change the text. So I'll change the text to, um, uh, uh, maybe this is on a vet's website and they sell some merchandise. So I'm going to go ahead and just put shop here. I'm going to change the text color and maybe I'll use some of the color here in the image here by the, maybe even the tongue. Either I'll, I'll decide in a minute by going to the color picker up here and I'll select the tongue to see if I like that. Not bad. How about this color? Nope, can't see that very well. So I'm going to go back into the dog's mouth or maybe even here, select this red and I'll select with a darker red. I'm actually happy with that, so I'm going to say OK. okay. Now I want to make sure that these lines of text are centered to each other, so I'm going to go to my layer palette. I'm going to select both of these text layers. To do that, I'm going to hold down my Shift key, select that layer. Now I can move them together, and I also get my alignment tools up here. I want to align them to the center of each other, and it shifts this one over, okay? Again, you can use your arrow keys to move things around a little bit on your document as well. Maybe I want to add maybe another graphic here, maybe in this area here, and I will go to my shape tools. Okay, by default, you're probably seeing the rectangle tool, but I want to do an ellipse. So I'll go right here and I'll draw a small circle Okay. When the Properties palette pops open, you can change the color. You can also change the color up here. I'm going to click here, and I'm going to use the color that I last used, which was from the text. I'm going to move that circle. Okay. If you're having a hard time selecting your layers, don't forget that you should probably get rid of Auto Select. I find this setting a little bit annoying. And open up my layer somewhere I closed it okay maybe in here I'll put um, a discount maybe 25% off or something like that before I do that I'm going to move my text layers over a little bit so I'm going to select this layer and this layer and I'm going to move them over to see give me a little bit more room I'm going to select my ellipse here maybe even make it a little bit bigger to scale this up I need to go edit transform scale and I get the handles that will allow me to scale it up and when I'm happy I can hit my return key and I will put some text on top of this circle I'm going to add another layer here I'm going to come with my type tool click and I'm going to do 25% mm, off that's a good deal I'll do 25%. I'll hit my return key and say off. Again, keep in mind I have all caps still set in here, so I'm getting all caps every time I type. I also want to center this, the paragraph, 
palette is open for me, but you also have those options right here as well. Okay. I want to collapse the space in between off and 25%. So I'm going to open up my character palette. This one's in the way here. My character palette. And I'm going to decrease the spacing. Okay, I must not be on the right layer, so let me check what layer I'm on. Oh, I was not on. Hmm. Oh, there it is. Okay, I am on the right layer. Let me go back again to the character palette, and I'm going to decrease the space here. Again, make sure that it's centered. It doesn't actually look centered. It must be the percent is kind of throwing it off a little bit. Okay, If I want to increase the size, I can always go right here and increase the size of the type. But in Photoshop, you can actually scale your type as well. If I go Edit, Transform, Scale, I can scale it up like this as well. When I'm happy, I can hit Return. If I select the percent here, I can e actually kind of do a subscript with it. It actually makes it align a little bit more in this box. I'm still not happy. I feel like I have too much space in between 25% and off. So I'm going to decrease that a little bit more. Pretty happy with that. I think I want to move everything over still a little bit more. So I'm going to select my text layers. I'm going to hold down my shift key, select through these layers and just move them over. Maybe I'll move over the dog as well. Move him over a little bit. When you're happy with your banner, I definitely suggest that you save your Photoshop file so you can come back to it. So I will do that right now. I'll go File, Save. I want to navigate to my Art116 folder, my Photoshop folder. Anything that's in this Photoshop folder is not ready for the web, so that's why it's separated from your named folder. I'll name my Photoshop folder Dog Banner. Okay. And I'll do Shop just to give me an idea of which one it's for. And I will save. And say OK when this pops open. Now to save it for the web, okay, so it's web ready. I want to go File, Export. Export as. When this pops open, I want to make sure that I have the correct format. I will leave it at JPEG. I'll leave the quality at 100%. I'm good with the sizes here, canvas size, and I'm just going to say export. Now this image is ready for the web, but I need to make sure that I'm in my website image folder. So I'm going to go to my desktop, Art116, my name folder my images folder and this is where I'm going to save it because it's a web ready image. Again, make sure that your names have no spaces and that you have your extension. So, now this image is ready to put on a website.